independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Future health care for 17 million Americans now in doubt. Well, I'm worried about our whole family, honestly. Janine Reed says Obamacare saved her family from financial ruin when her son was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Medical bankruptcies are a reality, and they were a much bigger reality before the Affordable Care Act. Democrats tonight vowing to appeal. They're going to fight it. Look. This is just another in a long road of stuff that's not going to happen when it comes to health care. We are in a situation that we have been in for the last decade. We are in a situation that we will always continue to be in. We have 340 million people that live here, give or take, depending on what the census looks like. And the reality is, is we're not always going to be happy with health care. And we're not happy now because we were promised, right? Remember when, when Obamacare came in, we were going to save 2500 Every family is going to save 2500 bucks. It's not worked out that way. Not at all. We've added some 20 million people, of which half of those are on, what, Medicare? Right? And then you go from there to, I mean, it's just how many of of those 10 million are actually paying full freight? Not a lot. It's a joke. But the trough is continuing to be just full. And while that trough is full, there's no really, there's no way anybody is going to want to change the way that this thing is going to go. So this judge overrules it, says, hey, we're going to throw this whole thing out, Ah, blah, 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 blah. None of this is going to happen. The Fifth Circuit will overturn it. Eventually, the goal is to get it to where? The Supreme Court. And the hopes are, even though the Supreme Court has spoken, it's going to take a while to get there. So you never know what's going to happen because you need four judges to say, yeah, we'll hear the case, right? You need four. And even though Justice Roberts has already spoken, two things. One, something can happen in the next umpteen months or maybe year. Plus, somebody could pass away, somebody could decide to retire, whatever it is. Which I don't think is going to happen. But that's the reality is you've got some older justices that may say it's over, it's time. So who knows what will happen there. Secondly, if the mandate's gone, does Roberts look at it in a different way? That is the big thing in this, and that's the fight that this is going to be about. And can we do this? And will we go there? And this is going to happen. And I'm not quite sure, but what about the mandate? If the mandate's not in here, it's not a tax. If that, oh, oh, I see. But your health care isn't going away just yet, but it's about that mandate. Republicans say they wanted to maintain the Affordable Care Act's guarantee of health insurance for people with pre-existing conditions. But they also say they're still against most or all of the law, especially the individual mandate. With Democrats vowing to appeal, the decision on the ruling will now make its way through the courts, which will likely take months, probably years. But for now, the law remains in place, and the case could even land at the Supreme Court, then back in the hands of the president and in Congress. Yeah. Remember, the Republicans sold everybody a bill of goods, right? They they sold everybody. A, we are going to replace this thing. We're going to repeal it, and we're going to replace it with something better, something bigger, something more incredible. It's going to be awesome. You're going to be closer to your health care provider, and in doing so, it's going to be cheaper, blah, 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 blah. It's a bunch of crap. It is. Because like everything else, whether it's immigration or this or whatever it is that politics is about, It is not about finding a fix. It's about slapping enough Band-Aids on it and making yourself important and raising money off of this. That's what this is about. They saw the failure when it came to the Democrats continuing to run with Obamacare and win seats, and that failure was they got their ass handed to them for umpteen years and the Republicans benefited, so there was no reason for them to really try to fix it because they were going to ride that for as long as possible. That was the goose that laid the golden egg for them. So why kill the goose? Well, the goose is running dry. But it's not quite dead yet. And with this, this just brings it up. Up to to everybody look at it again. Look, 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 look. Here it is again. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. That is the reality of this. Don't panic just yet, but I would keep a very close eye. The threat against Obamacare is actually very real. Could take some time for it to follow through if the courts uphold this decision. But the stakes are very, very high. Yeah. But you don't have to worry about being kicked off tomorrow. But we haven't saved money. It's double in the 10 years or so what they said it was going to cost us. 
to ensure basically 12 to 15 million people with subsidies and 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 some people just automatically here you go here's your insurance there you go don't you you're too poor you can't pay for anything and so what you have two three four million people that are paying for it on their own that's the reality of this it doubled what it was supposed to hasn't saved any money there's got to be a better way but why would you look for a better way if it's politically not broken and that is the whole thing politically it's not broken. So why fix it? I mean, if it's broken, I get it. If it's broken to the point where, mm, then we got to fix it. But there's two things. First, this was never written to be health care. It was written to be law. Okay? It was written to be law. Second, and vitally important for the Democrats, it was written to eventually bankrupt the system and say, ah, geez, we got to do this now. It's got to be single payer. It's just got to be. It's just absolutely got to be single payer. But even the Republic, here's the problem with the Republicans is that they're running against public sentiment. Public sentiment is we need to figure this out. And you guys push back on it, but you don't offer anything new because you don't offer anything new. Maybe the Democrats have the right way to go. And because the Democrats have the right way to go, uh, some people are just getting sick and tired. They're like, hey, you know what? Single payer sounds good to me. I'm over this. And remember, the single payer is you. It's me. The government may make the payment, but they make the payment that they take from us to make said payment. Let's let's remember that. And I love it when people come at me. You don't even understand what. So you say socialized medical single payer payment. You just don't get it. No, I do get it because I lived in it. How many of you lived in it? I have. I lived in England. I was part of the National Health Service. I had my NHS card. I know exactly what it is. So I've been through single payer. I wasn't a fan. I got I subsidized and got private insurance over there. But we think the whole world has single payer, and they don't. Canada does. The UK does. But a lot of other countries that we think all have this, oh, it's a right, everybody's got it. It's a bunch of crap. It's still that Germany, France, guess who pays for that? Employers. It's all subsidized. Employers pay for it. A lot of people have private health insurance. Nothing is too different from us. Our biggest issue is we have too many middlemen and administrators in between health insurance, right? I mean, uh, the health provider and ourselves. And that is a huge issue. And we need to sort that out. But it's not going to happen overnight. It isn't. We need to ask why are things as insane as they are? Well, it's simple. The game, it's numbers. You think Hollywood accounting is crazy when a movie will make $300 million and they'll take a $250 million loss and it only costs $40 million to make? Well, multiply that times 10, right? They charge 10 bucks for an aspirin because they know if you go and dispute it, you can knock it down to a dollar an aspirin, which it only cost them 10 cents for. They're going to take a $9 loss, write that off, but yet still have a profit. Little things like that is the wacky way that we end up paying so much. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. So over the weekend, this this little girl who who died, and, and, and now it's, you know, here is the battle of immigration, and we do this in this country. We'll take a situation that is awful. We'll make it a singular story. Stalin said this, and for those of you who know Joseph Stalin is, you should read a book. But Joseph Stalin said the death of one is a tragedy, the death of millions is a statistic. And when you have one and you can make it personalized, it's about tugging at the heartstrings. The family of seven-year-old Jacqueline Call McKean calling for a fair investigation into the seven-year-old's tragic death while in Border Patrol custody. The death of a child is the most painful experience that a parent or family can endure. Lawyers for Jacqueline's family now disputing accounts that the little girl had not had food or water for days, saying she appeared healthy when she crossed into the U.S. with her father. Her mother, still in Guatemala, says Jacqueline and her father were trying to escape extreme poverty by seeking asylum in the U.S. Yeah, and then there's a debate on whether or not they were seeking asylum. There's a debate about this entire situation. How much did 
the Border Patrol have a part to play in this. When they got her on the bus, it was a 90-mile drive. Apparently, her dad said she started getting sick then. But he said the Border Patrol, so far, has come out and said, look, the, 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 you know, the immigration, the Border Patrol, they, they, they seem to do everything they possibly could. Was it something that just came up? How you know, This is what happens, right? You, you're taking a child on a journey that for an adult that is healthy can be perilous, Right? Not just talking about people taking advantage of you, the cartels, the 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 the, the human trafficking, all this stuff. But for a child, you throw in lack of food and water on a consistent basis, it can get ugly, and that is that that's the reality of this. According to a government report obtained by ABC News, nearly 300 people have died trying to cross the U.S.-Mexico border this year. The Commissioner of Customs and Border Protection says they are understaffed. Our border patrol stations and ports of entry were built to handle mostly male, single adults in custody, not families or children. Democrats are calling for reform, while members of the Trump administration say her death should be a warning to other migrant parents. Yeah, but you know what you're risking. You look and you say, risk-reward, risk-reward. And the risk is the potential for us dying or something happening is is there. But the reward is if we get to America, the opportunity for for a better life. And that's what parents are willing to take. And you know what? I know people want to blame Trump and, and all of this. This was a tragedy. It's an awful, awful, horrible situation. And no matter how much you say this should be, hey, you parents out there, look at what happened. They're still going to try it. Because the risk reward is, yeah, it's a risk, but the reward is so much greater than what we have now. 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. A week from today is Christmas Eve. Time to get yourself a My Pillow for the ones you love. And with the offer they've got for you right now, you're going to sleep well knowing that you've given a great gift. And on top of that, you may just sleep well because you may keep one of these for yourself. How about this? My Pillow, limited time. Four pillows, two premium pillows, two go anywhere pillows, half the price, plus free shipping. Easy, easy to maintain, 100% machine washable and dryable. Cotton made in the USA, 10-year warranty, and right now they've extended their money-back guarantee till March 1st, 2019. A deal like this you will find nowhere else. Sleep easy with a smile on your face knowing that, hey, you kept something for yourself and you gave out some great presents. Call 800 983 Forty-nine seventy-five, or go to mypillow.com. Use promo code Benson. That's mypillow.com. Promo code Benson, or eight hundred nine eight three forty-nine seventy-five. Mypillow.com. Promo code Benson. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter C H A D B E N S O N. Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio, medium rare, and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. The stock market is on track for its worst December since the Great Depression. The Dow and the S&P 500 are down nearly 8% for the month. There's concern about interest rates rising and economic growth weakening, not to mention the trade uncertainty with China that has plagued the market of late. The Dow dropped 507 points, the S&P lost 54, and the Nasdaq lost 156. Breathe, breathe, don't look at your account, just breathe. But there is a worry here that we've had a lot of growth over the last decade, and that slowdown is eventually going to come. Now, is this a time to freak out? We continue to go lower, but it's not a panic. And I think that that's one thing that people have to keep in mind. Yeah, it's not a panic. And this time of year, you usually see a retooling of stuff. You'll see some stuff come down. People are looking into the future as far as what may be big next year. Some stuff is probably overvalued. Some people are taking their opportunity to grab some of uh, uh, of the profits they've made, which is going to push stuff down. Is it a panic yet? No, but it is coming. And the way I always look at the economy, it's not if but when. And more importantly, how do we weather it? Meaning, when the economy comes down, is it going to be a soft landing or are we going to crash? Is it going to be 2007 or are we looking at six months to nine months of some uncomfortableness Then we regained our footing and away we go? That's what you have to ask yourself. Are we in that position? Right now, I think we're not in a great position. We're over leveraged. We've, we've got big debt. And on top of that, we as Americans... And globally, 
we've overextended ourselves again. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward. But I don't think this is one of those things where we have to worry about it immediately. But a, a new poll out today says a lot of Americans are becoming pessimistic on where the economy's going. Everybody needs to take a deep breath. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us each and every day. At this time, we like to deliver to you something that makes you smile and that makes you hipper and cooler on the streets. We call this our Urban Word of the Day. It's time for the Urban Word of the Day, fam. What? Right now? Time to get a little more hip on the streets. I can't understand a word you're saying. Urban Word of the Day. Remember, it's about getting people to notice you. No such thing as good press, bad press, or bad social media. Good social media in a lot of ways. This one I heard this weekend, Pop-Tart Effect. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, it's where something is so negative that it becomes a positive or so positive that it becomes a negative. Pop-Tart advertising is one of the things they call it. So that it's so hot it's cool or so cool it's hot. Yeah, I thought, well, that's interesting. I've never heard of it put that way. But, yeah, I could see that, especially like Fortnite, right? It's so cool that maybe it's becoming a negative. But is it that bad, right, that it's a negative that's a positive? I don't know. But Pop-Tart Effect is your urban word of the day. Thank you for saying that and dated urban slang so that I'll understand you. That there was the urban word of the day. We damn stretched your cranium. Questions about Hillary Clinton and the Steele dossier strike me as more of the same. I didn't learn anything new in there. Maybe they did. Yeah, I don't. I, I got to be honest with you. They, we, they keep dragging James Comey in. I don't know what we're going to find out because uh, it, to me it just seems like it's it's a waste of time. But other people think it's uh, very important. I just don't. I, but here he is. He goes in. He answers questions. He leaves. And people could sit there and toss things at him. He's a horrible, bad human being. Uh, You know what? It's this is what politics has become. Lots of questioning behind closed doors. Lots of this kind of cat fighting stuff. But are we learning anything? And is America getting stuff done as we move forward, as we head towards the shutdown? I don't think so. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Flu shot. Have you got yours? Hmm? Plus, a four-day work week. Would you be interested in that? And we've got a poll question. We'll talk about that as well. So, Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. President Trump has long promised to repeal and replace Obamacare, and this huge decision gives him the opportunity to do just that. The downside is that now he and the Republicans who have been fighting to abolish this law for the better part of a decade, they're responsible for what happens to health care next, and they don't have a plan. Nah, they don't have a plan. If they had a plan, they would have used it when they had the chance to do everything because they had everything in their favor. They had the House, they had the Senate, they had the presidency. Remember? He was going to pass it. He had this pen ready. He was ready to roll. I've got my pen. I'm going to sign it. If any of you guys, I, I'm going to swear at him. I'm like, yeah, do you swear you're going to? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's me. Totally, I swear. I always tell the truth. And then I'm going to go there. I'm going to sign it. And it's going to be great. No plan. They had no plan. They had no plan. They didn't. And you could say, well, there was kind of a plan, and the McCain blew it up. Now, you know what? The fact is, is they had eight years to work on a plan, right? Really six solid years to start putting together a plan. All right, we got a plan. It's going to be great. Where you're going to go over here and then you're going to go over here and then I want you to go over here and then this is right. And the plan's going to be this. And then we're going to go, oh yeah. And then they're going to sign it. That's going to be it. There was no plan. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. It isn't. Everybody needs to take a deep breath. But the reality is, is the Republicans had a chance and they failed. They failed to repeal, they failed to replace, they failed to do any of the things that they said they were going to do, that's on them. One of the reasons they're no longer, right, leading the way in the House is because of their failures to get many things done. 
Some of it is Trump. Not going to lie to you. We like to check power. Party and power usually gets checked. We all know that. But a lot of it was ineffectiveness. And this is one of those things. They were ineffective. They ran on the repeal and replace. And when the opportunity came, they didn't repeal and replace. And now they're in a situation where they've now got this thrown into their lap, but it won't matter because there's not going to be anything done. House isn't going to take anything up. They have anything to worry about. It's going to go. Both sides are hoping that this stays in the headlines for as long as possible because they can both raise money off of it. And they don't really care about the fix because there's more money in the disease that is the fight in the politics of this world with ACA Obamacare than they are actually trying to sort it out. It isn't until you and I and everybody else get to the point where we're sick and tired of it and somebody comes along with a fix that won't be perfect, not going to make everybody happy, but it's better than what we got right now. Speaking of health care, kids, you got your flu shot. A new study finds more than 40% of Americans have not been vaccinated and, in fact, don't plan on getting vaccinated. Now, this is despite the warnings, the potential dangers, and last year's record number of flu-related deaths. Yeah. There is a lot of deaths when it comes to the flu. You know, over the weekend, I was talking to somebody who was arguing with me about all the things that have changed, homicides on the right. We we live safer times than we've ever lived in our life. But for all of this stuff that we talk about, the fear, because remember, there's no politics to the flu, right? There's politics in immigration. There's politics in mass shootings. There's politics in in terrorism. There's politics in a lot of stuff. There's no politics in the flu because the flu kills everybody, rich, poor, black, white, doesn't really matter. The flu kills and there's no like, hey, you know what? Like, what's going to be your campaign slogan? Right. Vote against the blue if you hate the flu. I mean, what's what's your campaign slogan? Right. There there is none. Kills 80,000 people last year. It's not exciting. Right. It's not exciting. Nothing there that's exciting about it. So if you got your flu shot, because a lot of people have it. People under the age of 45 were the least likely to report being vaccinated. Here are the top three reasons why people don't want the shot. They worry about the side effects. Some think the side effects are worse than the flu. Usually it's just a sore arm, though. That's a myth. All right. So number one, side effects are going to be bad. Right. So that's that's a big thing that people are worried about. And young people don't get it because we think it's stupid. It's a waste of time. And I feel good. I feel OK. And if I get it, it'll help me, you know, uh, it'll help me build up antibodies in the future. But, you know, I'm going to get a sore arm. What's the other myth? Thirty one percent say they're going to get the flu from the flu shot. No, the flu vaccine is inactive. It cannot cause the infection. If you do get sick after getting the vaccine, that's just coincidence. Coincidence. All right. So it's dead. It's not going to make you sick. Right. But that's what we hear. You people get the flu. They get the, that just happens. Right. That just happens. Sometimes it just happens. And 31 percent say it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work all the time. But if you get the flu shot, you are 60 percent less likely to need treatment for the flu. So it might lessen the severity. Yeah. So that's interesting. So if you get the flu shot, while it may not work for the flu that you got, you build up some of the antibodies. So it's not as bad. One of the other things they say, too, is. If you get the flu shot, they're showing that people who work out right after getting the flu shot, not like right that day, but like say they go the next day or whatever, and they work out and they it, it, that it helps build up your strength and immunity towards the flu. But a lot of people don't get the flu shot, right? And and I've been guilty of it on numerous occasions uh, that I didn't get the flu shot. Uh, and, uh, and, and you know, how many of us have had the opportunity? You go into a place, they're offering flu shots, you don't get it. Uh, sometimes it's laziness on our part. But when you think about it, the fear that we talk about every day, the stuff that grabs the headlines, right? All of these things that grab these massive headlines, like, oh, my God, the guy was like, you know, something happened and somebody shot somebody and terrorism and and all of this stuff and immigration, all this craziness. The reality is 80,000 people died last year from the flu. Albeit a lot of them are old or compromised immune system and even young people have died from it. But. There's no fear because there's no politics in it. Uh, Last year's flu season, keep in mind, was particularly severe. There was a record-breaking 900,000 hospitalizations and more than 80,000 people uh, died. Now, many of them were adults older than 65, but also 180 children died from the flu last year. Yeah, so you got to watch it, and it gets nasty. And if you get it now, it takes about 10 days to work it through your system, 
And usually January, early February is when it gets the worst. So there's still an opportunity for you to get it and for there to be usefulness to it. And I may just do it myself. You just never know. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. So here is a question for you. Would you? If you could, would you work a four-day work week? Imagine if your boss said that you could work a four-day week but still be paid for five. Well, that's what the boss of Perpetual Guardian did, and he wasn't talking about working any longer during those four days either. The company is giving it a go for eight weeks and finding it solving all sorts of other problems too. So we've decided to try something reasonably radical, where you will be working four days a week and you will be paid for five. It was a little bit of a, you know, a drop the mic moment. Yeah, I bet it was. So they're trying this. Now, this is happening in a lot of places uh, all over the globe, but even here. And for a while, it is. It, some companies have always had this. But w- the difference is this guy's like, look, you guys are going to work. If it's nine to five, you work nine to five. You're not working from nine to seven and then you get a day off. It is you work your regular hours and then you get a day off. And I could see how that'd be intriguing. Essentially, it is that I will pay the staff for five days. They only have to work for four, provided the productivity that I get in the four is the equivalent to the productivity I used to get with five days. Boom. Translation. If you can do it in your eight-hour day, four days a week, and it's the same as you would get if you work those other eight hours on a Friday or a Monday, depending on when you get it, then why wouldn't you do this? And when you're fighting over, and this is the other thing, too, why companies do stuff like this. When you're fighting over employees, meaning it's a tight job market, you have more jobs, and you're looking for good employees, what do you do? You throw something this out there, like this, because it'll make people go, hmm, I may not get more money, but I'll get more free time, which is as valuable for a lot of people as money. It means the world to new dad, Josh. My little girl, uh, Addison, six months old, so um, it really it means I get to spend a lot, lot more time with her. Josh takes Mondays off. It's creating loyalty. I can't see myself moving on to any other place. And Josh reckons fitting five days' work into four is easily doable. For myself, I'm always looking for ways to, to do things better. Yeah, well, with technology, and it also means, okay, I can't screw around on Facebook all day. (laughs) All right, I'll do all my work. Because, you know, have you ever wondered to yourself, if you just sat down and did all of your work, so there was no distractions, you did, you know, eight hours of work, maybe take a lunch and a couple breaks, but you you did at least six-plus hours of solid work every day with zero distractions, how much do you think you could get done? How much much further... Could you knock out things at work? Oh, yeah. A lot of us are probably like, I don't even know. Well, probably a lot. So we'll see. But a lot of companies do this. Tech companies have done this. And a lot of companies, because you, you want to make it unique. Rather than say to somebody, okay, I could pay you 60 grand a year and you want 70. How about I give you 60 grand a year, but I'll allow you to work from home one day. I'll allow you to take a half day on a Friday. I'll allow you to work four days. It, that's the way that they're they're doing things like this, and you know it, it's no longer just about hey you can have free lunch, or you get a free whatever. It's about how because nowadays a generation, especially a younger generation, they want time. It's not about the money, even though they should think about the money. They want time. Time is valuable to them, and you can't get that back. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. A lot of people worried about what's going on in the stock market. So one of the things I would say to people is if you're in a, I'm very uncomfortable with your investments right now, rather than blowing the whole thing out, why don't you take a small portion of it if you want to get rid of some and get rid of that and then make a new decision based on what you have. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people are doing right now. They're freaking out because they've seen the stock market down day after day, and it's, you know, we, we haven't had a, a run like this since 1980. It's kind of been ugly. Uh, and, and people are looking forward to 2019 and think, is it going to get that ugly? Is it going to be awful? Are we heading into a recession? What do you think? New poll says a majority of Americans are now finding uh, themselves a little pessimistic towards the economy. 
Uh, what say you? You can text the program, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Uh, 16% say they're worried. 52% say no, the economy's fine. 17% say somewhat worried. And 15% say, well, a recession is coming. What say you? Tweet at me, at Chad Benson Show, or text the program, 323-538-CHAD, 323-538-2423. Saw a movie this weekend, absolutely love. Kendall Jenner makes a lot of money. It's the Chad Benson Show. Deep States? Uh, no. Deep Doo-Doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. An oldie but goodie climbing the charts. Mariah Carey's 1994 classic, All I Want for Christmas is You, just hit number six on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. No holiday song has been that high up on the chart since 1958. When the Chipmunk song by David Seville hit number one, All I Want for Christmas, by the way, is now Carey's highest charting hit in a decade. (laughs) The shine has worn off, Mariah Carey. That song, I will say, it's infectious. So I took my little brothers and we went and uh, we had a fun weekend with Jack. And uh, if you're new to the show, Jack's my son. My little brothers are adopted. Whether well, my ne- nephews have been adopted, so they're from 12 all the way down to seven. And we all went to see the Spider-Man movie, which is the best movie. I mean, just a, the best superhero movie I've seen in forever. It was great. But we went to Knott's Berry Farm on Saturday, and we went and saw Snoopy on Ice, and. So we're watching Snoopy on Ice before, you know, as the people are packing out the little theater there at Knott's Berry Farm, and that song comes on, Mariah Carey's song, and people are clapping, and, like, there's about 2,000 people, and they're all singing it. It's an infectious song. It is. And every year I hear it, it's like the one Christmas song that doesn't drive me nuts. It's just like, I like this song, right? And, you know, it's just, it's a fun song. Absolutely. It's one of those things. Here's something else. So I'm at Knott's Berry Farm. And so my other little brother, Spencer, he's 15. He should never have been alive to this age. He has brain damage. He has a trach. He has a G-tube. That's how he eats. He pours the food into his stomach directly. He has got cerebral palsy. He's got all kinds of issues. And I feel bad for some of these places that have these handicap sections and they're afraid to enforce their own rules. So my brother, he can see, he can comprehend some stuff, but he can't talk. He can't walk. He'll never do any of those things. And there is a group of people, not a few, a group of people that are taking over the handicap section. Uh, I call some of them were fatty caps, Chad, nutritional overachievers who have cankles and have to have some sort of walker or device to get around because they've nutritionally over to achieve to the point where gravity has become their biggest enemy. And then there are also some other people. It's like my kid has eight. You, you don't know my kid has ADD or whatever. And it, sometimes they're, they're, it's on the inside. It's not what it's set up for. That area is set up for people who are in wheelchairs and they're helper. So this one guy... Him and his family have like 14 seats. My mother's almost 70 years old. She's got a fake hip, and she's pushing around my little brother in a wheelchair. And they tell my mom and aunt to F off and change their Merry Christmas attitude. Then they get my mom's face, which time my mother loses it over the fact that, like, you don't know, but some people have disabilities on the inside. Your kid's doing cartwheels. This kid can't see. You've saved 12 seats. That's not what this is about. And then they went and got the police on my mom. And the police or the security guy took one look at my little brother and said, yeah, I want any part of this. And I feel bad because you can't enforce that. But it's insane. And some people are just so obnoxious all the time. And there's these people out there, this group of people out there that want their kids to have some sort of special, like, you know, uh, dispensation because of X, Y, and Z when they don't need it. They don't. They don't. My little brothers, two of them, are a mess outside. That Physically, they're fine. But, whoo, I would never go in an area like that, even though you probably could. I would never do that. That's for a helper and a wheelchair. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. (laughs) 
Chad, why are you going? I am. I'm just pissed off about that because you know what? Who would yell at a 70-year-old woman with a kid in a wheelchair because your 12 people need to sit on a bench and you'd rather, whatever happened to, hey, you know what? Would you like to take the seat? That doesn't happen anymore. Screw you. Oh, my kid, my kids, he's he's disabled on the inside. Maybe true, but you don't need 14 of those seats. Forbes released their list of 2018's highest paid models. Kendall Jenner is winning by a long shot, making 22 and a half million this year. Boom, 22 and a half million dollars. I don't begrudge the Jenners or the Kardashians anything. Earlier today, I was getting pushback because people were like, oh, it's just all about their looks. And why are you? you uh, look. Great. They worked their asses off. They were so far ahead of the game. They realized how big social media was going to be for them. They realized that they could reach their fans one to one. They could become a brand like nothing else, not just through television. And in fact, that that brand would be bigger because of social media than television. I think it's great. Right. Kylie's worth some nine hundred million dollars. Ah, rock and roll. Good for you. Good for you. And if your looks, they may get you in the door, but their brains have kept them around. They see far, 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 far away uh, more of what we see when it comes to social media and how to use it. That is a good thing. God, I wish they would wear a T-shirt of mine. You know how big I'd be then? Not very big. We all know that. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Future health care for 17 million Americans now in doubt. Well, I'm worried about our whole family, honestly. Janine Reed says Obamacare saved her family from financial ruin when her son was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Medical bankruptcies are a reality, and they were a much bigger reality before the Affordable Care Act. Democrats tonight vowing to appeal. Yes, they were. They were a much bigger reality. Once Obamacare came in, medical bankruptcies went down. Doesn't mean it wasn't tough on people. Does it? And the average person, did you save your twenty five hundred bucks? It was only cost. It's only supposed to cost a trillion dollars over ten years, nearing two trillion dollars. It insured twenty million Americans. Right, ten of them, ten million of them went to Medicare. Right, about seven million or so got a big break from the government and they got a bunch of cash to pay for it. About 3 million Americans actually fully pay for it off the exchanges. Did it change that much? No, it didn't. And it didn't save anything. It's government. Government tells you it's going to cost a buck. No, that's going to cost you a hundred bucks because that's government. And that's the frustration that a lot of people have. But when you allow the people that are going to be insurers, to be in the room, right? You scream and yell that they're the reason that that this is out of control and the cost is raising. Hey, why don't you guys come in and write the rules? Now, oh, you guys, we, you want us, you want us to come in there with, you're not playing us, are you? We can? Okay, this will be great. Quick, guys, come on. It's frustrating. It is. It's absolutely frustrating. Now, this ruling on Friday means very little when it comes to health care, all right? It, it doesn't mean that it's over and done with. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, am I going to not have insurance come January 1st? Don't panic just yet, but I would keep a very close eye. The threat against Obamacare is actually very real. Could take some time for it to follow through if the courts uphold this decision. But the stakes are very, very high. Yeah, It could take some time, and that's the important thing. How much time? A while. Now, it's interesting to see how long the courts are going to take, because the Fifth Circuit's probably going to overturn what this judge did in Texas. 
And then it'll be the opportunity to appeal it to the highest court in the land. And you need four judges to say, okay, we'll hear the case. Now, based on what we have now, nothing really going to change. Except for one thing. Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, while he sided, if you will, with the liberals, that was when the mandate was in there. The mandate's not there. And think about this. Let's say it takes 16 months to 24 months to get there or a year to get there. Who knows how long it'll take? What can happen between now and then? Potentially another opportunity to place somebody on the Supreme Court that may be more conservative. Those voices would have the opportunity to then say yay or nay. But as of now, I don't think anything's going to happen. I don't. Both sides are going to fight over this. Both sides are going to sit there and, and argue about this. But the reality is, is I look at this and I think the GOP has, they've not done enough. They've had the opportunity. They had everything. They didn't do what they needed to do. It's not over. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And so everybody needs to, to take a deep breath. But I understand why some people are worried. And look, if you look at this thing, I don't think anybody should go bankrupt. I don't think anybody should. There's ways that we can go about doing this when it comes to health care. But we better figure it out sooner rather than later. And the thing that we should all be looking at is why are our leaders using things like this to continue to raise money, continue to scare, and continue to keep themselves relevant? Because they want your vote. And this is a way they look at a way to get your vote. That's why. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. I will tell you this, kids. Uh, stock market down. Ass is getting handed to a lot of people. Don't look at your retirement. We're moving forward, but is 2019 going to be any better? Most economists who are looking at this say, even though right now unemployment 49 year low, we're seeing the job gains, they're relatively healthy, wages continue to climb. The feeling is that next year, things aren't going to be where they are today, and they're actually going to be in a worse place. That is a possibility. It is. And a new survey out says that uh, most Americans, or a good portion of Americans, are starting to feel pessimistic. They're starting to feel worried about the economy. And I get that. I do. Trust me. And it's not if the economy is going to be good, because I think the economy be, will be somewhat okay next year. But towards the end of next year, I think the economy could see a slowdown. And then you start asking yourself the question, this is a vital question, is how do we approach that? Right? Are, are we going to see just a collapsing of the economy a la 2007? Are we going to see a soft landing? Is it going to be a hiccup? Or are we going to have the, the, the stock market blues and flu? And that is something that we as a nation need to figure out because you're going to go through this as an economy. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. It's how those downs are dealt with that really really shows you the strength of the economy. That's our poll question today. Do you feel the economy is slowing down? Are you worried that we might have a recession in 2019? 15% say yes. 49% say no, it's fine. 19% said somewhat worried. 17% of you say, yeah, there's a recession coming. And on top of all of that, so think about this for a second. One of the things that has helped Trump is the fact that there is a strong economy. What is that going to look like if the economy takes a dumper and all of a sudden you're looking around and you're like, whoa? Because what have I always said? That noise that is a whisper right now with Russia and money and the porn actress and the playmate and Cohen, that noise will grow louder and louder potentially. If the market goes, and if the economy goes, very interesting. People who know better, including Republican members of this body, have to have the courage to stand up and speak the truth, not be cowed by mean tweets or fear of their base. There is a truth, and they're not telling it. Their silence is shameful. James Comey, again on the Hill, uh, getting questions. What kind of questions? Well, the same old questions, talking about Hillary and emails, things of that nature. 
Uh, but he did talk about something that the president said. It undermines the rule of law. This is the president of the United States calling a witness who has cooperated with his own Justice Department a rat. Say that again to yourself at home and remind yourself where we have ended up. Rat. 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 Now, what did he rat on? A lot of people saying that he ratted on himself for something he didn't even do that wasn't even against the law, but because he had done other things, he was willing to go to the mat to try to help out and even give himself up and plead guilty. I don't know. He's going to jail now. How long is he going to go to jail for? Couldn't tell you. But Comey was in there again, and it's the same old same. People, you know, I just want the Cliff Notes version in the end. What Mueller's going to do, and I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know how many more months, and I do believe it's going to be months. Now, it could be a couple months. It could be six months. It could be potentially, if he's got a 1,000 more witnesses, think about this. Potentially, it could be six months or a year if he's got more and more witnesses along the way. While people might be getting sentenced, you're building something up. But it still isn't in a situation where we're looking at collusion. We're looking at any of these things the way that we were looking at it before. Because remember, that's what this was all about, right? It was collusion, and it was Russia, and it was all of these things. And now we're sitting in a situation where it's something else, and then it's something else, and then we're over here, and we're onto this, and now we're onto that, and now it's campaign finance, and it's... I I don't even know where we are. And a lot of people are frustrated because they just want this damn thing over because I think they're sick and tired of talking about it. But how much did Russia do and what exactly did they do? With laser-like precision, two new reports prepared for the Senate Intelligence Committee said Russian trolls use social media to try to suppress the black vote. Through targeted advertising and messaging, African Americans were encouraged to boycott the election, abstain from voting for Hillary Clinton, or to spread cynicism about participating in politics. The influence campaign was led by a St. Petersburg-based troll factory known as the Internet Research Agency, which was charged earlier this year by special counsel Robert Mueller. Yeah, yeah. If you if a meme throws you off, if a video throws you off, if a post throws you off and you're not going to vote or you are going to, and if you don't want to vote, I got no problem with that. I don't. I have zero problems with it. If you don't want to vote, I got no problem with it. I think it's vitally important. It's one of the most important things you can do as an American. Maybe civically the most important thing you can do outside of serving your country. But if you're not going to vote, I got no problem with that. I don't. But if the reason you're not voting is because you were swayed because a meme told you not to or that it's not cool, or that you change your vote because of some cheesy video, that's on you. That is 100% on you. That is so right. Like, Couldn't even imagine that. Like, I was totally going to do this, but then I saw a video, and it told me not to, and then if I didn't do it, I'd be cooler. So I'm going to go with cooler. That's that's silly. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. Las Vegas, an Airbnb. Very interesting thing that came down last week. What could this mean for a lot of people out there across the country that may be looking at their house and saying, I'd like to rent this out. We're going to touch on that. So much more still to get to, including the death of a little girl in custody with immigration and how this is becoming a political nightmare that both sides are trying to capitalize on because that's what we do in this country. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. The city of Las Vegas is the only municipality in southern Nevada that allows short-term rentals like Airbnbs. Over the time, over many months and years, they've added restrictions, and they did once again last week. The new requirement will say that owners have to be on the property overnight 
while their homes are being rented. In other words, new short-term rentals will not include entire homes, just rooms within a house, and the owner has to be present. It also bans homes with more than three bedrooms from being rented at all, and it keeps the rule that rentals must be 660 feet apart. Oh, wow. Welcome to a world where, I mean, look, at what is Vegas? Great city. Love Vegas. Love it. Great. But you have what? hotels everywhere. It's a destination. People go in there to hang out. They're going to have fun. And when you start renting out your house, you're competing Instead of coming here and gambling and going into this place right here, right, where you can go have fun, you're going to go over here to this house with your five buddies, and you're going to rent it, and you're going to hang out. And it may be a little bit cheaper, and that's competition. And when you're a disruptor, these are the things that happen when you disrupt. And that's what's going on here. Airbnb disrupts. Vegas is, is, they're doing everything they can. So now you got to stay in the house. So I'm going to rent it out to five people, but I have to stay in the house. How fun's that going to be? Not really. That's just going to be awkward. That, and with all that's happening, right? You've got the Golden Knights. Go Knights. You've got the potential as they're looking around with that a new arena. Hey, what basketball team's going to be disgruntled and want to come here? And then you got the Raiders. People are going to make it even more of a just a weekend fun destination. And with snowbirds and things like that, you're going to have an opportunity to rent it. No, sorry, you can't. It's your house. But no, we're changing. But you see this in disruptors. You see this with Uber. You see this with Lyft. Look across the country and the fights that they get with cab companies, things of that nature, because they're disrupting the flow of it. And if you have a chance, and, and this is what happens when you have lobbying and power. You go to... D.C., your state capital, whatever it is, and you say to them, we think that this shouldn't happen. We think this is bad. And then you point out all of the things that can go wrong, right? All of the worst-case scenarios, that's why we do it better than anybody else, so you should ban these things because really what you're saying is ban competition because we have this. Smart thing to do. Don't know if I agree with it, but it's a smart thing to do. Right? It is. I mean, you look around, you wonder why we don't have hospitals the way that we should have hospitals, more care facilities across the country. If you go look in your states, as we battle about Obamacare and this and the other, and you find out that there's restrictions, hospitals put and, and, and municipalities put restrictions on more health care centers put in there. Because why? Because it's competition. We want to be the only show in town. And that's kind of what this situation is. They want to be the only show in in town. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Super Bowl not too far away and much like the Oscars, they're having some issues. While Maroon 5 has reportedly landed the gig, Variety says the band, known for its collaborations, is finding it impossible to bolster the lineup for one of the most watched musical performances of the year. According to the magazine, more than half a dozen stars have turned down what it has dubbed music's least wanted gig. Uh, And I don't know why it's a least wanted gig. Uh, It's not. And I think part of it is it's the political thing because of Trump and the NFL and Colin Kaepernick. But it's still you have a chance to be seen by like, you know, a billion people. And if you look, a lot of times the halftime show is bigger than the actual game itself. And that is, I mean, you're, you're, you're turning down that opportunity to do that. Some of it's politics, and some of it, I think people, it's just a huge, like the Oscars. You found out you get paid 15 grand for the Oscars. That's what Jimmy Kimmel got for it. And you're going to get shellac the next day in social media. And I think a lot of people are turning it down, not only because of the NFL thing, but I also think a lot of people turn stuff down now because they don't want to get destroyed on social media. They want to be in somewhat of a controlled environment that they can control so they don't look ugly if things go a little south. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Nobody's called me, by the way, to ask me if I want to host the halftime show and sing a song with Maroon 5. You know who'd do it, though? Nickelback. That's the Canadian Maroon 5 and the Canadian Coldplay. Chad Benson Show. The 
Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The president applauding the decision over the weekend. Exciting things happened over the last 24 hours. Democrats quickly condemning the decision. Former President Barack Obama posting messages on social media about his signature law, encouraging Americans to enroll by Sunday's open enrollment deadline, despite the ruling. Yeah, so a judge strikes down the ruling. What's it mean? Very little for you. The reality is, is it's going to take a long time. It's going to wind its way through the system, the fifth uh, the Fifth Circuit will probably strike this judge's uh, thing down that it could potentially go to the Supreme Court. But you need four justices to take the hearing. And do you have that? And I don't know. But it, it's not going to happen overnight. This is uh, probably six months or a year before we even get to that point where we're speculating. Uh, we go from speculation to reality. It's just uh, there's nothing to worry about. But the fight is still there. And health care is still not improved. And it's not going to be improved. Not until cooler, calmer heads prevail who want to find solutions. And it's not going to be 100% solution. Not everybody's going to be happy with what they get. But it will be better than what we have now. No place is perfect. And if you're looking for perfection, you're not going to find it in health care or anything else. That is the reality of life. That is the reality of this. But we can do better. We can make it more affordable. And I will say this. I don't think you should go bankrupt. I don't. I don't think you should go bankrupt over medical. But I know when you start to take money out of stuff, people that are smart, people that make a living, go elsewhere. And then you have the brain drain and nobody wants to be involved. So if you take money out of medical, if you take money out of pharmaceutical, and look how much of it is part of our economy, if you take that up and say, we can't do this anymore, we're taking this all up with you, we'd like you to kind of take half of what you're earning now and donate some of your time, people are going to be like, screw that. This is a business. We're leaving. I'm not going to risk my money for no reward. It's a risk-reward world. That's why people go into the industries like this, because especially when it comes to drugs, the pharmaceuticals, and all these things, the risk-reward is that thing that you're creating, you could put a billion dollars into it, $2 billion, $3 billion, $4 billion, and eventually you could go, it doesn't work. Back to the drawing board. So it's a risk-reward. And when you take away the reward, why would anybody risk anything? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Uh, this is something that we should be looking at. And I don't know about you. It annoys the hell out of me. And we'll get to that. In a second, the annoyance of it all, but it is growing fast. This new survey found a dramatic increase in the number of teens who are vaping. These numbers doubling for 12th graders who reported vaping nicotine for the 30 days before taking the survey. This is the second year researchers have looked at these numbers. They specifically looked at 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. In 2018, over a third of 12th graders reported vaping at all in the last year, translating to about 1.3 million more teens vaping than the previous year which is a dramatic number. <sighs> yeah, that is that is huge. Uh, and it's becoming a hip thing. That's what it is becoming. You know, you've got the, the they've got the big vaping machines. They have all of these things and, 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 you know, people blowing smoke. It's ridiculous. It is. And this weekend, so I took the boys to uh, first we went to see a movie, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But then on, on Saturday, we all went to Knott's Berry Farm. It's a big family thing. We all went to Knott's Berry Farm. And the amount of people who were at this amusement park that were vaping just out of nowhere was insane, and and it's annoying. You know, I go for my walks around here, and I do the walks around the complex and stuff, and I'll see people vaping, and they blow their smoke everywhere, and it's annoying, and it's, like, become this cool thing. And on the other side of stuff, you've got Jewel. And 
Jewel is is facing some some real issues here that because of the way that they're growing their product and what they were doing is they're using social media influencers and if you don't know social media influencers it's very interesting there are plenty of people out there like you you unless you're in the know you don't as far as social media and you follow it all day long you probably don't know about a lot of these people but there are people that are influencers and influencers are people who have 100,000 200,000 500,000 million 3 4 5 10 million people that follow them and products and companies will come to them and say hey use my stuff right use my stuff and check this out right check check out check out this use my stuff we'll pay you 10 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars if you can go on there and do advertising because we know you'll influence many people to do it and people are coming out jewel say well we're, we're going to get rid of this now but that's because the ugly cat is out of the bag jules t reached out to me to work together we came up with working on a sponsored post which is just a blog post and then one instagram post their budget was okay we can offer you a thousand dollars so that's one person thousand bucks somewhat of an influencer and when you get to a point where you have that instead of having to go to sponsor you know these things because that doesn't do as well it's like when we do our reads here we talk it it, it doesn't do as well as when you go out there and you say hey I'm such and such, and I've got a million captive followers. They're going to do a lot of what I said. Try this. You're going to love it. Try this. There's a whole world on social media where these people make tens of thousands and millions of dollars off this, and it's crazy, and that's the way Jewel went after it. Again, vaping and Jewel, little separate things, but it's because it's a hip factor, right? One of them is more about, like, if I was... Like, I don't know if you, have you ever vaped, Phil, because you're you, you, you've smoked for I've never done it. Have you ever vaped? I wouldn't call it vaping. I had an e-cigarette. This is before okay, they see. had all the, the stuff that looks all weird and stuff. Yeah. It's like, hey, check it out. It looks like a genie bottle, but I can smoke out of it. So check this out. These are some of the things in vape. So you've got fruit pop, food fighter juice, five ponds, dinner lady, cut wood. They've got Yoda. They've got pinkies up. They've got Mad Hatter juice. These are just some of the stuff that you can get. And that's why you get all these weird smells. They've got like Skittles and all kinds of crazy crap like that. Yoda and Darth Vader. Uh, where you talking about e-cigarettes, e-cigarettes or these things like Juul, that's supposed to be like the alternative to smoking. And their hipness was we'll find influencers who can who can help us. Like, hey, kids, rather than smoke or hey, adults, why don't you try this rather than smoking? but still getting you to do something. This is Christina Zayas at work. We captured some photos, added some lifestyle of me. For the last 10 years, she's made her living as a blogger and social media influencer. One of her recent jobs, post positive content about the e-cigarette jewel. They really wanted to appeal to the younger market, and they did. There you go, because that's where it's at. Where do you go? You go where the fish are. Because I'm still amazed that anybody smokes. All right, but I get it. You get addicted. I understand that. These things, you know, it, it's like whenever we get this, like, there's a new diet pill out, and everybody runs out and gets it. It's like, okay, but we have not done the research. And then you find out, like, a year later that, oh, by the way, if you take this for more than six months, your liver falls out. You're like, oh, well, that's probably not good. And it's the same thing with these. We don't know what the long term effects are, but when you're trying, when you're seeing your audience go away, how do you replenish that audience? This is how you replenish it. You go to where the fish are. You make it hip. You make it cool, right? E-cigarettes, Juul, whatever it is. My little brother, who's just turned 20 or 19 or whatever, him and all of his friends, they either vape or they Juul because it's hip. Right? It's a hip thing, right? They, they, they like it. It's, part, it's an accessory anymore, and that's scary. That is scary, and it's, I think it's only going to get worse. It really is. And I want to see where this thing goes, because when you look at this and it's it is a nightmare. And how bad is it for you? Not just the lungs. What else is it doing? And how is annoying is it? It's the number one most annoying thing now in a workplace is no longer fish in a microwave. That used to be the number one thing. And let's be real. Fish in a microwave is disgusting. We can all agree on that. It's gross. Fish in the microwave. Vaping is. 
because people like some places don't have a rule about vaping. So people will vape inside. Well, it's just water molecules and particles. It's just it's nothing. It's gross. I hate it because they blow all this massive smoke. And it's just it's getting to me. It's it's frustrating as hell. But what do you do? And to me, the social media side of things is the way that everybody attacks us, because that's where you go to get kids to get excited about stuff. Because you've got to replenish what you're losing. Because the older generation isn't smoking cigarettes. And you don't want to lose that market share. So you say we've got something better. We say we've got something different. We'll invest in all of these smaller things and we'll grow it up. Because marijuana is still not quite there yet. We don't want to lose all of this. But we can't advertise anymore the way we used to with Joe Cool. Remember Joe Cool the camel? So instead, hey, we'll get influencers. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. I can't wait to get home. I've been traveling for five days. My body's sore. I've slept on awful mattresses across the board. I can't wait to get my Casper mattress. Casper is incredible. Try it for yourself. 100 nights in your own home, risk-free. If you don't like it, send it back. They refund your money. They'll even come pick it up. The alignment, the way that the pressure points are, my body doesn't hurt. My hips, my back, especially my 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 lower half, is just because all the years I played sports, it is at times so painful. When I have my Casper mattress, I feel so much better. My body aches no more. Over the last few days, my body aches a whole bunch. So here's the deal. Casper wants you to try it. 100 nights, risk-free, in your own home. Perfect Christmas gift for yourself. 100 nights free. Think about it. You ship it in a small box. You open it up. You're amazed by the box, the size, the whole nine yards. You're going to sleep like you've never slept before. 35,000 five-star reviews across all of their products. Casper, Google, Amazon, 100 nights, risk-free in your own home. If you don't like it, send it back. They refund your money. No questions asked. They'll even pick it up. Go to Casper.com. Use code CHAD. Save 50 bucks toward the purchase of selected mattresses. Casper.com, code CHAD. Casper.com, code CHAD. Terms and conditions apply. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's the Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! After years of stops and starts, 80-year-old Laura Lee Halsey realized her goal at the University of North Alabama. My daughter graduated from here, and now my granddaughter is going to graduate. And now I'm going to graduate. I just... I think it's wonderful. She started working toward her degree nearly 30 years ago and left, she says, when things got rough and was offered a job. I grabbed that job and forgot about college. But her granddaughter, Lauren, didn't, and Halsey returned. She um, made sure that I got my degree. A grand moment for this family of grads. How cool is that? That is pretty cool. 80 years old. Think about that. 80 years old. Gra- you're never too old, people. That's what we're trying to say. You're never too old. My daughter graduated from here, and now my granddaughter is going to graduate. So think about that. Daughter and granddaughter there. How awesome is that? She um, made sure that I got my degree. Granddaughter and daughter. Like, you're going, Grandma. You're going, Mom. You're doing this. You're getting a degree. you got to get out in the workforce, and you got to work. But think about this for just a moment. So what? She's 80. Think about what she has seen in her lifetime and where woman, women once were, right, to where they are today to when she was probably in her teens and early 20s working and even thinking about going to college was just just unfathomable and to finish at 80 she probably 20 60 years ago she probably didn't think of anything like this that's pretty cool that is i think that that's kind of a, a cool situation right there say David Barry Jr.'s sentence for illegally taking wildlife in one of the biggest deer poaching cases in Missouri history. While he's in jail for a year, at least once a month, he has to watch the Disney classic Bambi. Party. Including the scene where a hunter shoots Bambi's mother. Disney is a parent company of ABC News, a judge ordering the first viewing of Bambi on or before December 23rd. <laughs> 
Now, apparently this dude, this wasn't like he shot a one deer or two. Deer. He killed hundreds of deers, and what he would do is he would cut their heads off, and he let the carcass rot. And now he's getting uh, essentially uh, payback. And I, I got zero problem with this. I don't. Zero problem with it. Have a good time in prison. And, again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deer. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. Question of the day we got on the old Twitter is, are you worried about the potential of where we're headed in 2019 when it comes to stocks and or the economy? Because we could potentially, after the growth that we have seen over the last decade plus, albeit at times extremely slow, uh, but still some growth, is this it when everything's going to go? Uh, 15% of you say you're worried. You, you've got some worry. Because the new polls out are saying that a good majority of Americans have a little fear that we're headed to something bad. 49% of you say, no, nope, everything's fine. It's good. 21% of you say it's somewhat worrying. And 15% of you say that there is a recession at hand. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I do think we're going to see a slowdown. How big of a slowdown? And that is always the thing that's most important is you know they're coming. It's not if but when. It's how does the economy and the nation handle the slowdown with it arrives? Is it going to be a lot? Right. Are we going to see this thing over a a year, 16 month period, or is it going to be somewhat of a soft landing and it's going to be a short six months to nine months kind of thing where we regain our footing, we find our solid grounds and sea legs and away we head. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Somebody tweeting in about how awful vaping is uh, in the smoke. I, I don't care what people do. Right, As long as you're not hurting anybody else, I don't care. I just find the excessive smoke ridiculous. That's my big issue with that. If you want to do it wherever you want to do it with any of the, the flavors that you have, you know, you can, like when people have a jewel, you really can't tell compared to the, because I think part of the fun in vaping that people do, the kids and everybody else, is the fact that there is such an ex- excess amount of smoke and that people just, and it just, ugh, it just, and when I'm and and like I'll go for walks around the complex and all this kind of stuff, and you can always tell who's vaping and who's not. And they seem to think because it smells good that you're okay with it. And I'm not. I'm not that guy. That's you know. I just I'm not going to spit at your shoe. So I ask that you keep your smoke elsewhere. Is that so hard to ask people? Apparently, for some people it is. But man, God, I'm just amazed that people just they have no awareness. What what happened to awareness? Where did that go? We're like, I'm aware of things that are around me and the people that are around me, so I'm going to not do this. Just out of kindness. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at me. Do love hearing from you. Take the poll question at Chad Benson Show. Check out the thechadshow.com. You grab your podcast right there. Wherever good podcasts are available. Woo! It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Seven-year-old Jacqueline Carl Makin died after 11 hours in the custody of Border Patrol. The results of an autopsy won't be available for weeks, but officials suggest Jacqueline had not had food or water for days before she reached the border. Migrant rights activist Ruben Garcia says... Jacqueline's father took care of Jacqueline, made sure she was fed and had sufficient water. The Departments of Homeland Security and Customs and Border Protection plan to investigate to ensure that policies were followed. Yeah, it's a horrible thing. It is a tragedy, and she's going to be made the face of the fight against Trump and the wall. 
as if he had something to do with this. The reality is, is it's just a tragedy. That's it. Even her father said, does know what happened, right? And that he's not blaming them for that. Now, a lawyer will get a hold of him eventually, and a lawyer will eventually say it is all their fault and that you deserve X amount of millions of dollars. Uh, he said that, you know, the, the track, while dangerous, uh, wasn't all by foot. They say that her father looked after her, that actually they didn't take the entire trip from Guatemala to the U.S.-Mexico border on foot, that most of it was actually in a car, and it was just the final part of that trip that the little girl had traveled with her father on foot, but that throughout the trip she had adequate food and water. Yeah. I don't, we don't know what happened. What we do know is that she seemed like she everything was okay. So they get taken into custody. And they board a bus, and then I think it was like a two-hour, it was like 90-mile-an-hour-plus journey that they had to take. By the time they actually got on board one of the CBP vehicles, she seemed completely fine. It wasn't until she was on that bus that she started vomiting, and then she didn't have medical intervention for 90 minutes because they were in a rather remote area there. Yeah, and it's horrible. And they tried to revive her. They finally did when they got to the place, but they could not save her and it is a horrible situation it is a just a bad situation has nothing to do with the wall lack of wall wall there or not but when you can take something and this is politics 101 never let a tragedy go to waste that's politics 101 never let a tragedy go to waste and when you can grab this and run with it you do it do I think that this girl died because of what Trump says, did, or what the Border Patrol the Border Patrol did or didn't do? No. Everybody said she seemed fine, she got on a bus, and she started getting sick. Who knows? We may find out, and this is this is where politics is. People will make her a poster child of a horrible situation. They will. It's a bad situation. These people live in abject poverty in fear in certain places of the world, with no hope. Their governments don't care. Their governments are corrupt. Crime everywhere. They risk everything to come to this country because this is the golden goose. They see it. Oh, there's a brass ring. Let's go get it. And they're willing to look at the risk-reward, and the risk is we stay here. We're going to have nothing. Nothing's ever going to change. Nothing's ever going to get better. And eventually... We'll either die or, you know, we'll either be killed or we'll die in poverty. Or we risk the opportunity of something bad happening to us on a perilous journey. But when we get to where we're going, the reward will be the opportunity to be in this country. It's horrible, but people do it all the time. Some 300 people have died in the last several years. And it's more going to happen just from lack of stuff. Water, food, it's its awful. But people are willing to do it because it's the risk-reward. What is the risk? What is the reward? He was coming here because he wanted a better life. And they'll make her the poster child of this resistance against Trump and illegal immigration and that everybody should be allowed asylum and blah, 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 blah. And the reality is, is this was a bad situation and there will be other ones. But what happens if in six weeks or eight weeks the thing comes out that she had something that there was no way that was ever going to be said? We'll never hear about that. That she had something wrong with her heart and there was nothing they could have done at all to save her. What happens then? That it wasn't lack of food. It wasn't lack of water. Because let's be real. If it's lack of food of water, that's on her dad. That's not on them. We won't hear any of those things. But we will hear a lawsuit. That I can say. Speaking of lawsuits, kids. The judge's decision, which came down on Friday night, declared that the individual mandate requiring all Americans to buy health insurance is unconstitutional. And he also struck down the rest of the Affordable Care Act, including mandatory coverage for pre-existing conditions and guaranteed essential health benefits like prescription drugs and pregnancy care. Uh, so, ACA. Obamacare is going away. Is it not going away? What's going to happen? Oh, my God. We better free. This is it. It's over. Is this this it? Is this over? Is it finally over? Do I even have insurance? Slow your roll. 
you do have insurance. It's going to take a while. This is going to be a never-ending story, as we already know, just like the movie, except without that horrible song from Lamal, the old singer of Kaja Gugu. Some of you will laugh. Others will be like, what is he talking about? This is a never-ending story. This isn't going anywhere. You still have ACA, Obamacare. None of your insurance has changed. The reality is this is the first step to potentially unwinding something that will take years to unwind if it ever gets unwound. Right now, and this is important, there will be no immediate changes to anyone's health care. While this ruling is appealed and works its way through the courts, and that could take time, but this could be the beginning of the end for Obamacare. And that does mean that the Congress has to get to work because it has such a huge impact on so many people. Yeah, it does. And people are scared because we live in a world of fear. Fear is how we get people to do things. Right? Fear is how we get people to do things. Oh, my God, Chad, it, it, what about this? What about fear? We, we get people to do things on fear. But it's got to be the right kind of fear, right? It's got to be mass school shootings. It happens every single day, and the world's going to come to an end, and blah, 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 blah. It's, that's it. Terrorism. It's, oh, my God. Oh, it's got to be a, a reaction, fear. If we don't build a wall, these drugs are going to come in. If we build a wall, they're not going to come in. But So we better do it. Oh, fear. But it's got to be politically the right kind of fear. To get people to act. What do I think is going to happen? Nothing. I think it's going to go to the fifth court, the fifth circuit, and they're going to say, bah, and they blow this guy's, this whole thing out. And then you've got to ask yourself, will it get to the point where there is enough justices in the Supreme Court? You need four that will hear a case to bring it up. I don't know if there is. Now, things can change. Somebody could die. Somebody could retire. That could change the, the 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 look of the court, the makeup of the court, which may then have the opportunity to hear it again. Plus, without the mandate, Justice Roberts' whole thing, as he went with the, the Democrats, a lot of people think, it was all about the mandate. If you take the mandate out, does that change his view of this thing? I I, I don't know, because I don't think it's ever going to to get to that point, because I'm hoping that cooler heads prevail and that we find some politicians that want to get something done in a right way. Now, I may be foolish in thinking that. I would like to think we've got people in place that will do that, but I couldn't tell you if we do. Not this group right here. But do I think it's going to go away anytime soon? No, I don't. And I don't even... And remember, what happens if it goes to the Fifth Circuit and the Fifth Circuit strikes down, they appeal it to the highest court in the land, and the highest court in the land says, we don't want to hear it, then whatever the Fifth court, uh, fifth Circuit says is what goes. And I do think the Fifth Circuit will strike this thing down, but it's, it, you know, it's the mandate. They killed the mandate, and that's the thing that a lot of people are looking at. Will this change it if it gets to the Supreme Court with Roberts and the way that he could view this? Republicans say they wanted to maintain the Affordable Care Act's guarantee of health insurance for people with pre-existing conditions. But they also say they're still against most or all of the law, especially the individual mandate. With yeah. Democrats vowing to appeal, the decision on the ruling will now make its way through the courts, which will likely take months, probably years. But for now, the law remains in place, and the case could even land at the Supreme Court, then back in the hands of the president and in Congress. Which is where it should be. This is why the Republicans didn't win. You can blame a lot on Trump, and he deserves some of that, but the reality is you didn't do the things you said you were going to do. You promised for years and you and you used Obamacare to gain a bunch of seats. You used Obamacare in a way that you were able to cash in on the expense of it because it's double what they said it was going to be near two trillion dollars. We didn't insure oh so many more people. We put 10 million people on to, uh, to Medicare, right? So we did that. Some 7 or 8 million people are partially paying for their insurance and subsidized, and about 2 to 3 million people are actually paying for it. So it's not like we had this massive thing, and many more people decided, well, I'll just pay the fine. I'll just pay the fine. Didn't do the things it said it was going to do, because it was never written as health care. It was written as a law to withstand challenges in courts more than anything else. Congress? Republicans cleaned up after Obamacare, cleaned up. But when push came to shove and the opportunity actually landed at their feet where they had everything 
Everything that they wanted and needed to change, to repeal, to replace, they failed. Failed. And I'd like to think they have an opportunity to fix it, but you and I both know that right now, with all the money, with the trough still being full in D.C., there's really no way or want to actually fix this anytime in the near future. And like everything else, their hope is the courts will decide a lot of this so they don't have to. That way they can look at their constituents and go, we tried, but the courts decided. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. AMAC, speaking of that, Medicare open enrollment is here, right? So you got that here. And you're looking around going, well, I don't know what to do. Uh, Well, guess what? Senior Resource Network and AMAC have partnered together ready to help you get your own private dedicated agent to help you walk through all of that. On top of that, they're out there advocating against things like Obamacare and repeal and replace for a real system that actually works. Also, immigration reform, social security reform, things of that nature. And they're giving you an opportunity to join for free, a year free. It's on me. Go to amac.us forward slash Chad. Plus, the benefits are incredible. Uh, Retail, restaurant, hotel, travel discounts, uh, amusement park discounts, Disneyland, uh, SeaWorld, Legoland, and movie discounts. Up to 40% off tickets there. It is amazing. If you want the conservative alternative to ARP, this is it. Join AMAC today. It's one year free. Go to amac.us forward slash Chad. A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash Chad. Join free. AMAC dot U-S forward slash Chad. One year free. AMAC is better, better for you, better for America. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Chad Benson Show. Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. The city of Las Vegas is the only municipality in southern Nevada that allows short-term rentals like Airbnbs. Over the time, over many months and in years, they've added restrictions, and they did once again last week. The new requirement will say that owners have to be on the property overnight while their homes are being rented. In other words, new short-term rentals will not include entire homes, just rooms within a house, and the owner has to be present. It also bans homes with more than three bedrooms from being rented at all, and it keeps the rule that rentals must be 660 feet apart. Yeah, and why this is important is, no, when anything comes into the marketplace, Uber, Lyft, any of these things that that happen that are quote-unquote disruptors, right? Like Netflix and all these, what happens is, The people that have been here forever fight back. And you see that in a thing like like when when Big Oil sees that there are companies that are coming in that alternative energy is going to take them on, they're going to fight the hell out of it in every way, shape, or form. Why? Because it's disrupting their business and the marketplace, and they don't like it. And Las Vegas is a big town. That's about what? Tourism. And you've got people who are saying, don't need to stay at X, Y, and Z, right? Don't stay at the Bellagio, right? Don't stay at Mandalay Bay. Don't stay at Caesars. Stay at my house, right? You guys can rent it out. It'll be great. And you've got a lot of people that own homes there who spend some time there, not all the time. They don't like that. You see it all the time with things like, you know, when I was – Last time I flew in and out of uh, out in SAC, uh, what ended up happening is my guy's like, I can't take you in there, right? I could take you in there, but I can't pick you up. You got to walk over here to get your Uber, this, that, and the other. It's it's insane. It is because you're a disruptor, and that's what the lobbying's all about. They go out there and say this. So now if you want to rent a home in Vegas, and now think about this. Vegas has the Golden Knights. They're trying to get a basketball team. They're going to have the Raiders in two years. A lot of people are going to want to go out there and they're going to want to rent a house. No, you can't. You got to stay here or else. You've seen it in New York. They've done the same kind of thing. You can't rent it. It's your home. You should be able to do what you want with it. No, 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 no. Can't do that. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. 
because you're a disruptor. And disruptors will always find that fight because the establishment that has built up their base that they make money on don't want you anywhere near that. They don't want the competition. They don't. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. So now if you want to rent out your house, you've got to stay there. That's not awkward, right? That's not awkward at all. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. And I say, when I was uh, uh, when I was out in Palm Springs and living there, it was very interesting to, to see how many people, like Coachella would come and all of these, you know, uh, you had the country, big country music fest, and these a lot of these snowbirds would run out their house for huge money because you'd have eight or ten people that are going to be staying there. And, you know, well, we don't want them because they're partying and this, that, and the other. And the fight wasn't that strong. You get some HOAs that would fight against it, but by and large, the city didn't. But you're going to find that more and more. And the, But the taxis did fight against Uber and Lyft going to Coachella that they had to go somewhere else because they wanted their own. You see it in Austin where they said, Uber, you got to go. And Uber's like, fine, we're not going to do this anymore. And everywhere there's going to be those kind of fights when you have a large establishment that is making their money off this economy and you see what's happening in New York City with taxis because it's cheaper when there's competition. They don't want competition. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Four-day work week. What say you? Also got a poll question up. We'll touch on that. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Former President Barack Obama posting messages on social media about his signature law, encouraging Americans to enroll by Sunday's open enrollment deadline, despite the ruling. Obama slamming Republicans for, again, trying to undo the ACA. He writes, if they can't get it done in Congress, they'll keep trying in the courts, even when it puts people's pre-existing conditions coverage at risk. Yeah, and think about this. The Republicans keep saying they want to keep that. right? They want to keep that. So even if they go out there and say, oh, you know, uh, they want to get rid of it, even if they try to keep it, it's not going to change anybody's view because it's built in that the Republicans want to just get rid of this whole thing and let everybody flounder, no matter how many times they come out and say, that's not what we're looking for. It's not what we want. Obamacare is not going anywhere. ACA is not going anywhere. Not anytime soon. And I found this to be interesting when they were talking about like the issue of Obamacare in this last election. The largest issue in the last election, November 6th election, that moved 40 seats from the Republican column to the Democratic column in the House. The biggest single issue was the Affordable Care Act and whether it would cover people with pre-existing conditions. That's all people want to know. Pre-existing conditions. And you need the you need the mandate to force people to buy it so they can cover the people that are going to be covered knowing they have pre-existing conditions and that even if no matter what they pay it's not going to cover what they cost. But in the end, supposed to cost a trillion dollars over 10 years, we're nearing 2 trillion. Right? How many people are we really insuring? Well, it's 20 million people. But okay, so we're insuring 20 million more, of which we just move people onto Medicare. And so there's that. And then on top of that, you know, we, we, we've, we've gone and we say, okay, we've done that. There's 10 million there. Six, seven, eight million are getting big subsidies. And two, three million people are actually paying for it fully. It hasn't saved anybody any money. And then people come out and go, well, it it would have been more expensive without it. It's a battle. But it's a battle that nobody really wants to fix because the reality is, is if you fix it, 
There's nothing to talk about. It's like you fix immigration. Well, then there's nothing to talk about. We raise a lot of money on immigration, right? They raise a lot of money on it, both sides. Both sides raise a lot of money on gun control. Both sides raise a lot of money on health care. Both sides do. It's that disease. And if they find a cure, they can't raise money on it. And they need it. So, you know, it's not going anywhere. Both, both sides are hoping if it does end up going somewhere. Meaning there's some sort of final fix that it's not them that decide it, but the courts, because they understand the backlash of the base. If it's not 100 percent on your side or my side that we it, it, it's it's going to be too big. It's going to be too big. So we'd rather just hope that you guys fix it. That way we can go, whoo, we dodged a bullet. With laser-like precision, two new reports prepared for the Senate Intelligence Committee said Russian trolls use social media to try to suppress the black vote. Through targeted advertising and messaging, African Americans were encouraged to boycott the election, abstain from voting for Hillary Clinton, or to spread cynicism about participating in politics. The influence campaign was led by a St. Petersburg-based troll factory known as the Internet Research Agency, which was charged earlier this year by special counsel Robert Mueller. (laughs) When you hear troll factory, don't you just think, I'm thinking of trolls. Yeah, that's what they did. They tried to influence. Here's the thing. They tried to influence. It was awful. Obama, his team knew what was going on. Nothing got done there. This whole thing about we we paying attention to it now, we try to influence other people's elections. Here's the frustration that we should all have. If you are influenced by a meme or a Facebook or Instagram or Twitter post, you meaning I'm not going to vote or I'm switching my vote because of that, and you don't do any research on whatever it is that you're reading, you are a fool. You are. You vote because not only is it the right thing to do, right? Because if you don't want to vote, that's fine. In your mind, if that's the right thing to do, that's the right thing to do for you. I get that. But if you're influenced in a big way because you saw something on Instagram and and you're like, oh, my God, or Facebook, I got to change my vote. Not really trying to find out the real story put together the real numbers do all of those things in a real way which most people don't try to do most people don't try to do that i get at least five or ten text messages or tweets uh, or instant you know messages a week chad what do you use to get your information and i said i i I try to find as much as I can out about all the information, the numbers. I will use five, ten sources. If it's a huge story, uh, you, you might have to go to three or four places. If it's a smaller story, you've got to hunt around. Because what I've learned over the last umpteen years is people want information no more. They want affirmation always. And they want affirmation of their belief. So what good – if you are a conservative – You're going to go to Breitbart because they're going to give you the story that you want to hear to affirm your belief in something. And in doing so, they're going to give you the information that suits that belief. If you're a liberal, you're going to go to the Daily Kos, you're going to go to the Huffington Post, wherever you're going to go. And they're going to give you just the amount of information you need and the numbers you need to affirm that belief that you have. When really, you need to put both stories together, both numbers, and then you'll come out with a, a a more complete story than than what you have without. And that's the frustrating thing. That is. That is absolutely the frustrating thing with a lot of these things. It's sad but true, and, it, and it, it's getting more and more that way as we now are getting to, the point where, getting to the point where we're so tribal about stuff that we're only going to go to the places we think that we need our information from because it fits exactly what we want. We don't want it to go against our belief system because if it goes against our belief system and it's not true, that somehow we're defeated. And that's not the reality. You should want to know the truth. 
even if it sucks, you should want to know the truth. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Utah set to become the state with the strictest limit for alcohol consumption before driving, dropping the standard for blood alcohol concentration from the nationwide standard of 0.08 to 0.05. The new law is slated to take effect on December 30th, before New Year's celebrations begin, in an effort to reduce the number of drunken driving related deaths. Utah's new law also states that those who have that BAC and, quote, operate a motor vehicle in a negligent manner, causing the death of another, will have committed felony automobile homicide. Yeah, that's like 0.5. I Now, I don't drink, and I'm just trying to think, Producer Phil, is that probably for a normal-sized man, somebody like 5'10", like 200 pounds, 180 pounds, that's probably just maybe literally one drink? One or two, I would think. Yeah, yeah. Because two, if you, watch, if you watch live PD, everybody's only ever drank two. Nobody's ever gone, oh, my God, I had so much drink tonight. Right? And for a woman, that's definitely probably one. Small man, one. And I, 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 I don't have a problem with it. Like, of all the things that are avoidable, drunk driving is like the most avoidable thing. In the day and age where we have at our fingertips, with our smartphones, just a copious amounts of ways to get home, I got zero problems with it. And you know what else I wouldn't have a problem with? If they keep things at .08 except holiday seasons meaning memorial day weekend july 4th week you know uh uh new year's new year's if they want to move that i wouldn't have a problem with that either i wouldn't you know uh it, it's uh, because it is the thing that is easily the most avoidable i got hit when i was younger i was in my buddy's car passenger car and i was a passenger in his car and we we went through a light and a guy came through and he hit us. And I thought he was going to hit me because I was in the passenger seat. But my, we were going just fast enough that instead he hit just behind us. And he, was, he had this little Civic. It was like super just cheese that we were driving. You know, like it barely was roadworthy because we're kids. And it spun us around four times. And he said, you ran the red light. And, he did, you know, and when they came, he was actually drunk. And he it put us into a Taco Bell. Like an old style Taco Bell. Remember the old style ones with the brick, right? It was just a brick thing, and there wasn't a drive through, and and it, we spun around three times and hit it, and it was scary. And the guy was hammered, and he he was maybe a hundred feet from the where he pulled out of the bar, and he hit us, and it was just it was it was scary. And I'm thinking to myself, it's not hard to Not drink and drive. Go get plastered. Don't care what you do. Go get high. Don't care what you do. But understand that you're going to get popped if you do something stupid. And on top of that, and this is vitally important, you getting caught makes you doubly stupid because of the fact that at our fingertips, we have so many alternatives to get your ass home safely. So many alternatives. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. 1-800-Flowers. Now, I posted it on Friday. I have got my amazing holiday lights, roses, little tree thing that I've got back. It's incredible. 1-800-Flowers has something for you. It's amazing. It's incredible. What are you doing? Become a part of it. Get yourself some 1-800-Flowers. Send it to somebody you love. Send it to your family. Send it to your friends. Send it to your coworkers at office. Send it to your wife. Send it to your girlfriend. Send it to both. They're going to love it. 1-800-Flowers.com right now. 12 Holiday Lights roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, plus another dozen roses in a vase absolutely free. That's what they're doing for you. 12 Holiday Lights. It's incredible. Check it out. Post it on Facebook, Instagram. Picked at their peak. Shipped overnight. You're going to love it, but you got to hurry. This Unreal deal ends on Friday. It is incredible. So to get the 12 Holiday Lights roses for twenty nine ninety nine plus another dozen roses and a vase for free, this is what I want you to do. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. There's a radio icon. You click on it. Type in code Benson. You're going to get the deal. 1-800-Flowers.com. Code Benson. Offer ends uh, on Wednesday. I mean, on on, uh, on Friday. So you got to get yourself going. you got to get yourself there. You're going to love it. It's a winner, winner chicken dinner like you never seen before. Hurry today. 1-800-Flowers.com. Code Benson. At Chad Benson Show. Twitter. 
C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Man wants to be Santa Claus, and we got your useless Christmas info. Straight ahead, Chad Benson Show. Take one giant step to the left. Do you ever have anyone embarrass you like this? One giant step to the right. That's all that separates you from everything else that came from slime. You are now in the alt middle where it's just right. Call if you get weird. This is the Chad Benson Show. After years of stops and starts, 80-year-old Laura Lee Halsey realized her goal at the University of North Alabama. My daughter graduated from here, and now my granddaughter's going to graduate. And now I'm going to graduate. I just... I think it's wonderful. She started working toward her degree nearly 30 years ago and left, she says, when things got rough and was offered a job. I grabbed that job and forgot about college. But her granddaughter, Lauren, didn't, and Halsey returned. She um, made sure that I got my degree. A grand moment for this family of grads. Yeah, how about that? 80 years old, you can do anything. You guys get that? 80 is the new 70. I love that. 60 is the new 40. No, I could say 60 being the new 45 or 50. It's not the new 40. It depends, though. I've always, it's always about your mind, right? If you feel young, right? If you feel young, I, I could see how you could say, okay, you know what? I, I feel like I'm 40. I'm in good shape. I act like I'm I'm a younger person. I could see that. Because have you ever run into people like one person's 60 and the other person's 60 and you're like, wow, or 50 and one person's 60 and you're like, you're hip and cool. Like, you get it. And then there's somebody who's like 50 and you're like, what's wrong with you? Like, you, you, you're wasting. It happens all the time. It does. I always run. There are people out there that could be in their 70s and there's just something about there's coolness about them and and they dress well and they feel like they're they're just together and they've got it going on. And there are other people in their 30s and 40s and they just feel like they're 100 years old and they're just waiting for death. Yeah. Yeah. It if it's in your mind. Speaking of your mind. You guys know a week from tonight is uh, that night. Yeah, that night when he comes. Who's he? Santa Claus. My obsession with Christmas It started when I was a child. I got older. My sister-in-law says, would you dress up as Santa Claus at a party? I have long black hair, big, thick, bushy, black beard. I get white spray paint. And I just go... (laughs) And at that moment, I learned the lesson that no matter what is going on in my life, I could still do good. Yeah, so this guy actually is... According to his license, legally, that guy. Now, there are plenty of Santa Clauses out there who have fake IDs and fake credit cards. But when they go to use them, they don't work. The original Santa Claus came to me and he said, look, I got to retire. I'm just getting too old for this. So I had to step up and I had to legally change my name. You don't believe I'm Santa Claus because I drive a truck? I land my sleigh at LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> the whole time I'm listening to this guy, I'm thinking to myself, I don't, I, I, I feel like if you don't do what, like Santa's watching you, right? Because he sees you when you're sleeping and he knows when you're awake and you better be good or you're going to be at the bottom of a lake is kind of what I feel like with this Santa Claus. A lot of people who come to see me think I'm just another fat guy in a red suit. Look, maybe I'm not the guy who flies around the planet in one night. I just want to be the guy who lives inside of your heart and makes you happy. I want to give you the Christmas spirit. That's the guy I want to be. (laughs) And you better listen or else. Oh, my Lord. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. That's kind of cool, though. Changed his name to Santa Claus. So now when he goes, that's like that's really his jam. Santa Claus. Just go. Swipe it up. I'm Santa. I'm the real Santa. I'm the real Santa. What do you think of those apples? And you better listen to me or else I park my sleigh at LaGuardia. <laughs> Cause that's totally where Santa would park his sleigh at LaGuardia. Yeah, I got to, right? I'm not going to go to JFK. That's like a long way away from here. 
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Man, we are a week away from Christmas. New Year is right behind it. Question of the day. Do you feel the economy is slowing down? New poll out says that most people are starting to feel pessimistic about the economy. 15% of you say you're worried. 38% say no, it's fine. 29% say somewhat worried. 18% say recession is coming. Take the poll at Chad Benson Show on the Facebook page. Your useless Christmas fact of the day, Xmas. People get mad. You're taking the Christ out of Christmas. Eh, you're wrong. X. X is chi in the Greek alphabet or Christos, and you can check it out, kids. That's the way they spell it there. So you're really shortening it, but the reality is you're not taking the Christ out of it. You're just using the X for the C-H-I. Yeah, little silly things like that. Throw that in people's faces. Have a good rest of your day. Night-night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.